hey guys welcome back this is our third video tutorial and first of all congratulations if you have made this far uh, that means you are you are really into this stuff uh, in the last video we covered that how we can control the drone uh, with, the, with the keyboard right this video will be about how to get uh, the video feed from the drone and then we are going to add matrix to the video uh, so that you can see like what's the battery, uh, what's the pitch, what's the roll, uh, what's the what's the uh, what's the distance traveled from the start point because your drone has a VPS system, right? Visual position system. So it's going to tell you that how the way exactly your drone is. Uh, we have that feature in Drone AI software too. So if you have checked out the application on our website, you will see it in a 3D environment. It's going to tell you where exactly your drone location is. All right, enough of talking, let's get to the work. So as you see, this is our last video, right? Let's jump to the coding part. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to add a video feed. So we are going to extract the video or the, or the streaming of what the drone is uh, recording. And we are going to stream that on our laptop. So how we do that? It's not difficult. I just want you to stay with me. All right, let's just copy this file, create a new file, and let's name this file drone software part three. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to start streaming the, uh, the Tello object, right? So the first thing you can do is that when you are connecting, just say over here self dot tello dot stream off and then you say self dot tello dot stream on so now you will be like okay why are we doing a stream off first and then we are doing a stream on so sometimes what happens is that when let's say when you close uh, the program it's quite possible that the port is not released right so this thing is going to, if we are going to make sure that by putting stream off in the beginning that we are closing the port before reopening it. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Now we are going to get this source. So frame source is coming from frame read. So if you look at this in the Telo code, you will see that there is this function where the background frame read is like a class, right? So if you look at the background frame read, it's like a class. And what the library does is that it runs two parallel threads. So one is for sending the command and the other one is for getting the video feed, all right? So that's what this background uh, frame read is. So if you again, if you just go back and you see what this function does is that it just sees, okay, that if we have a frame in there or not, if it's there, uh, then we get the UDP address for the video. And then to, to, to be summarized, it sends us back like a source to, to read the frames, right? So that's why I've named this thing as uh, frame source, all right? Now, we need to update our source within the, uh, within the for loop, right? So because let's say we want to see a video, see we want to continuously update our video feed. So of course that's going to come inside the for loop. Before that, I want to change these two parameters. So this is the height and the width of the uh, of the Pi game window, right? So let's first change this to somewhere around 960 and this one to 720, all right? And instead of Pi game window, you can say drone video feed and control, all right? Because that's where we are going to control the drone and then we are also going to get the frame uh, of the video or from the drone, all right? Now we have the frame source. Now we want to start reading the frames one by one. And then we need to update, we need to put those frame inside the Pi game window, right? And then we need to update it over and over again. So how do you do that? It's pretty simple, not that difficult. So the first thing you do is that you start reading the frames, 
to start reading the frame you can you should do like frame equals to frame source dot frame right now we want to put something on the frame right so you can say okay text equals to battery right and then percentage dot format and you call the self dot tello dot get battery so if you go to this function you will see there's a there's a like a function in the library which, which gets you the battery and it's ranges from uh, 0 to 100 percent right uh, and we are going to put that particular battery on the on on our video feed all right you know what why not why just why to just do battery when we have tons of other stuff like you can see we have the flight time we have the height we have the temperature we have the attitude attitude so let's add two or three more parameters and not just one all right so let's do height also right other than that we can do our imu attitude data right what else mm, I think we can make use of flight time also all right uh, hold on all right so we have the battery we have the height we have the IMU and then we have the flight time we just need to call those particular methods now so for height I think there is something known as query height and then there is something known as get height let's see if it's there yeah I'm gonna use this one instead of query height alright and then we have the IMU data so for IMU is also known as query attitude uh, so let's see that uh, yeah here it is query attitude right and then we need the flight time so for flight time let's search time uh, hold on. yep we have the flight time all right awesome so now we have all of this stuff we want to put this on our frame so if you have ever worked with the cv2 library you know how this how these things work so we can do cv2 dot get text size and then just give text font font scale and then I think we need thickness right so we need to declare all these variables on our top of our screen uh, so let's do all of that over here uh, our font can be normal the use case that everybody uses font hshgrshgy I, I always get confused with the spelling name simplex right then we have the font scale which we will keep to 0 0.5 we have the thickness which will be kept to 1 then we have the color which I'm going to take as red and then we have the position uh, in the uh, which is going to be a 5 660 so I mean we have a 720 right as a length so I think 600 will be fine and 5 will be like the uh, on the y-axis all right so we have all this data now comes a part of so we want to we so what we want to do is that we want to display all of them in one line in like separate lines so I cannot just enter the whole text into the frame I have to loop and and add a put cv2 dot put text one by one by looping over it so the way you can do that is let's say and this is like you can do this this technique for every text right and if they are separated by slash n then you can just run this particular query or the script and then this is going to add the data on new line so let's say the text size is one which we just calculated on the top and this is plus five the x and the y zero let's say 
is the position which we just gave on the top five and six hundred right uh, and then we are going to loop over the data in the text so you can say for i x comma or let's say for i comma line in enumerate text or split and then you want to split by next line and then you calculate where do you want to put the stuff plus i into line height make sense and then you add cv2 dot put text then you do a frame then you do line then you do x comma y the location the font the font scale then you do the color which is red and then you do the thickness huh looks pretty good right all right now we have to do is just add some more tailing stuff right so we can do frame cv2 dot cvt color and you can do frame cv2 dot color and then it's bgr to bjr BG, B, oh sorry rgb all right so this will be used to convert an image from one color space to another right i mean if you have done some kind of machine learning then you will know this thing it's pretty simple stuff and then we have frame equals to we want to rotate the frame by 90 or the array by 90 degrees right it looks fine so this will rotate the array which we have built from the frame by 90 degrees in the plane we have specified by the axis all right and then the last step we need to do is to np dot uh, flip ud and then the frame so this will be this will be used to just flip the array that we just built from this over this line right and then we have to do two more steps so now we have the frame we you to we have to specify that where on the pi surface or the pi game window we want to surface our frame so you the array pi surf array dot make surface and then you just give frame uh and then you will need to specify where exactly do you want to specify that you know like frame in what exact location so if you remember the screen of ours was a pi game screen right and with, with this was our display so we are just going to specify where we want to keep that particular frame all right so everything looks fine to me let's try to run this thing and see how do we perform uh, all right when drone is already connected that's good so this is a good sign if you ever see that oh my god what failed uh what failed it's a query flight time that's not working hold on so what's flight time uh so it's saying that in invalid it will for int with base 10 i see hmm so you see what's happening so the query flight time reads this thing and then it returns a read command int that's strange so that means that it's returning it's trying to convert a zero seconds into an integer yeah this is not right actually the the people who wrote this library they didn't consider that i think they, they even tested it hmm this is an issue uh query flight i think we need some other command for the time uh, let's see uh, flight time get flight time let's use this one instead of query so there are two functions that you can use there's one query and there's there's one flight time let's use this one all right let's try to run this thing uh, before we start running let's change the speed from 80 to I would say 60 is fine and uh, all right that's a good stream all right t for takeoff all 
Alright. It flies good. Looks smooth to me right now. Let's try to rotate it. Mm-hmm. The speed is good. Alright. So I think this is a good lesson, right? We were able to get the video feed on our computer and uh, it it get, it sucks a bit in between. I'm not sure why it's happening, but it looks fine for now. All right, so in the next video, I guess we are going to do some kind of machine learning with our video feed and send the commands from our laptop to our drone and that will be something very exciting to see alright guys see you in the next video cheers bye